only subject uh, and that uh, Dr. Amit Kapoor uh, advised me to speak on. And my subject is uh, a little bit to do with this uh, main frame, which is uh, competitiveness and how can we build like cutting edge uh, innovation around that. So I have some thoughts on that which I'd like to share with you. And I know that uh, Michael Porter will be there. And, uh, you know, naturally I have to thank Amit Kumar Kapoor and uh, his leadership team. The most important thing, at least I like to believe in the context of the subject today, is the five main challenges that we experience in competition. I think the industry competition that we uh, go through, whether it's in the form of uh, new entrants, whether it's in the form of uh, threat of substitutes, whether it's bargaining power of buyers, whether it's uh, bargaining power of suppliers, or just simply uh, rivalry of uh, institutions, you know. But at the same time, I'm, I must confess that uh, when you take stock of all these issues, and I'm sure you've been through a whole lot of this drill early in the day, at least some of you, that when you take stock of the innovation, the competitive environment in the country, that uh, at least as a bank, as an institution, we like to believe that we are on the cusp of innovation-driven entrepreneurship, innovation-driven growth. And in some respects, you know, I have to uh, acknowledge and respect the fact that the government's uh, momentum is improving. We've seen a few things uh, still very nascent in their entirety, but still very uh, strategically important, uh, whether it's GST, whether it's the FDI gradual reforms, uh, whether it's Startup India, whether it's uh, Digital India, but the fact of the matter is that this is creating resonance. This is creating impact. This is uh, building a little bit of momentum for the nation. And at the same time, when you start seeing, even in the very, very nascent phases, that this is making a difference to some of the league tables which represent uh, competitive, competitive indices. Uh, and if you see the World Economic Forum's indices more recently, India has leapfrogged quite a bit to the 39th position, and that's almost 16 places in a very short span of time. And I think uh, this is a short, short foot forward for reforms in the pipeline. Second point I'd like to underscore is that the Indian ecosystem on entrepreneurship, because I've been asked to speak on entrepreneurship and technology, that uh, India's system is still like a little fragmented, a little distributed, and not necessarily very well connected. But when you see that uh, how to glue it together, how to connect it together, how to get the investors and how to get the technology and to make sure that it responds to the very frugal needs of our economy, how do we take care of the budding entrepreneurs, how do we really, you know, create also the skill power, you know, pool required to put, you know, institutions and young enterprises together, uh, do the basic infrastructure, and naturally, most of all, marketing and brand access to markets. So I like to believe that these are some of the challenges that India is facing on our innovation system, on our entrepreneurial ecosystem. At the same time, if you see the underlying, uh, you know, if you see the underlying movement, you know, the waves in the, in, in the, the, it's not a tsunami yet, but things are beginning to change. Things are beginning to really improve. The gears are changing. At least I like to believe that uh, growth-oriented models are falling in place. Whether they're being driven by, you know, IT uh, chambers of commerce like, you know, NASCOM or, you know, you know Angel Network, or uh, the uh, Thai, you know, the, the TIE uh, concepts. I think the fact of the matter is that a lot of the system is still very, very nascent. So what I'd like to believe and I'd like to recommend are a couple of solutions. The couple of solutions really lie around what I like to believe is uh, a concept which uh, has worked for us in our institution, which is driven by uh, design, new age design, is driven by, you know, innovation, somewhat 
driven by uh, creativity and I would like to believe that what leads to that is uh, entrepreneurship. So I call this concept DICE. India's DICE is driven by design, innovation, creativity and entrepreneurship. If you see the Indian economy for the last 60-70 years, fundamentally uh, it's been very, uh, very holistic, it's been uh, meticulous, it's been driven by logic and rationale. In the 21st century, there are a couple of uh, very fundamental changes which are moving the pendulum of the economy. And that economic change, in my judgment, is somewhat driven by the fact that there is a whole new mind operating in the Indian economy. And that whole new mind is somewhat driven uh, by the ability to create, by the ability to understand that there is a certain creative element that needs to be unleashed. And at least I like to believe that some of the disruptions happening in our economy have somewhat to do with this uh, headline concept of DICE. Design, innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurship. The consumer-led forces, the, you know, the consumer-led market forces in our economy are going through a stratospheric change. The disruptions in technology, you heard this, I'm sure, for the best part of the day, the, uh, the innovations across fundamental operations, quality assurance, service delivery, are also going through uh, tectonic changes. And I like to believe that people who are focused on that, uh, on that aspect of their businesses can build operating efficiencies, can create you know, technology differentiation, bring in and mobilize you know, frugal technologies. So I like to believe that India is that cusp at that sweet spot where probably Silicon Valley was 25, 30 years ago and possibly where Boston was 40, 45 years ago. I think India's uh, next uh, best springboard, the next big step forward actually lies in the emanation of the dynamics of the country. The opportunity that I think the government and we have to give them a little bit of respect that how they have created motivation, how they're building momentum, how they're reviving the core of the economy. The core of our economy is actually the micro, small, medium enterprises. It's not just about the startup guy who comes with a good idea from college. You know, we naturally have to motivate and encourage those fantastic ideas. But equally the fact that some of those ideas are already in fruition, but they don't have hand-holding bankers, uh, entrepreneurs, you know, corporate sponsors and cutting edge capability around that. So I think that what we have to do is to move the needle and get to this huge focus group called MSMEs. I think MSMEs in our country have uh, unlimited latent talent. And if they're injected with good practices, best practices, technology, innovation, some of them in my judgment, given the fact that Indian entrepreneurs struggle and they have a fire in the belly, can make a significant difference. So I personally, as a bank, as an institution, today like to address what I think is the most significant part of our economy. It's not the large corporate groups, it's not the mid-corporate groups, it's the MSMEs in the economy. MSMEs create their uh, effect on new startups. MSMEs create their impact upstairs on the larger companies in terms of the supply and design system around that. So I'm very convinced that the focus of our nation in terms of innovation, in terms of cutting edge entrepreneurship, in terms of creativity and entrepreneurship really, really should be the MSME sector. And this is my highlight point in this uh, little talk to you. The fact is that how do you really do this? You know, India is so fragmented, it's so truncated. Uh, we have bits and pieces uh, all over the country. It's a proven fact and it's worked in the rest of the world that how do you get clusters going? The clusters are very important. The cluster of the fact is that Silicon Valley became a cluster like 40 years ago on the back of uh, uh, Stanford University, right? And that built an empire, an empire in, like today, the, probably the best performing economy in the world. California went through a lot of switches, but the fact is that today's uh, California economy 
is driven by cutting edge technology, one of the, some of the most brilliant people building fantastic new systems. But fact of the matter is, can that be done in India? Amazingly, when I went there, uh, third time, and this year as well in May, 30, 40, 50 percent are Indians. The Indians who are engineering, the Indians who are creating that differentiation, the Indians who are building innovation in these uh, institutions like Google and Facebook and Cisco and, and a few others, you know. But the fact is, how do you get that culture of innovation going? I think we already have it. The, the question is, how do you catalyze it? So we have a formula. Yes Bank has a formula and I represent that formula. It's worked for me, worked for my institution. And we naturally have to cascade that. We have to ratchet that. We have to create uh, multipliers around that. And I like to believe that there are four points around this uh, concept, around this formula. It's called five. Number one, funding. We have to build very good funding models around uh, entrepreneurship in our country. No, it's not just about asking the government all the time to do all these tax incentives. We must do funding with a little bit of boldness, with a little bit of aggression, and sometimes the tax in incentives should not be like perceived to be substantions, but they should be intelligent, cutting-edge ideas. So I think uh, the startup environment in India has got off to a very good start. I was delighted that there are almost 250 incubators and accelerators being sponsored by the larger corporate groups. It will take time, I'm sure, because this is not only CSR, this is hardcore business enterprises. The second point I want to really share with you and, uh, you know, the Yes Bank and, you know, I'm building myself two fantastic, you know, incubators. Uh, really where there is cutting edge enterprise and uh, that concept is really you know superbly uh, building momentum and these are being connected with universities as in like uh, management uh, colleges institutes of management uh, whether these are engineering colleges we're building incubators and we're sponsoring incubators as a banking institution. To me, this is the best form of CSR. CSR is not about philanthropy. CSR is about creating more jobs. The third point I really want to share with you related to that is that entrepreneurship must also see certain value accretion. And there are fundamental models around that value accretion. And the value accretion is sometimes driven by the ability to list on small exchanges, MSME exchanges, and I've represented this uh, to uh, NSC as well and BSC as well, that we must create these small exchanges where there is excitement about liquidity, where early stage investors can monetize and then, you know, larger stake investors can come in. There must be liquidity at every stage of investing. And fourth point as far as expansion is concerned, that we must build platforms for building businesses and growth opportunities which are somewhat driven by return. So this concept of five is very simple, funding, investing, vesting, and being driven by expansion. I know uh, Amit has got a very, very busy day, but all I can share with you is that uh, as a new age institution, uh, Yes Bank uh, today with the, and uh, you know, it's uh, taken a lot of effort to be here, Amit, has turned 12 years old today and uh, uh, on the dot 48 quarters old and uh, I'm very happy to be with, with you because competitiveness of India I can tell you is just about five to ten years away but it will create the most significant tectonic differentiator with our frugal technologies with our differentiation with our intelligence, business intelligence, and the ability of people to leapfrog into mega entrepreneurship. So I think there is an entrepreneurial transformation which is uh, well underway. It's, uh, it's a stratospheric change which is uh, happening. And uh, so that I represent also my bank for a few minutes. Just last week, we launched what I call Yes Head Start. People are doing startups, so I said we must do head start up. We launched it and we are creating 20 incubators all over the nation. 
yes head startups which will give you know ecosystems which are going to be driven by funding to some extent are going to be driven by equity needs uh, to a to an extent by mentorship not only in fintech because we are a fintech company right we are a technology company in the business of uh, banking but the fact of the matter is that we are moving ahead and building new enterprises and helping to incubate these 20 centers and this is our form of uh, building what I like to uh, convey to all of you uh, CSR CSR with a practical outcome with practical results measurable and therefore be able to analyze and support through incubators and accelerators this is the sponsorship uh, that yes Bank is giving to 20 huh? Amit uh, today I you know, like to share that with you and of course Sukumar a friend from Mint uh, that uh, this is the commitment the institution is making on our 12th anniversary. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Kapoor. Thank you. So kind of you. This was absolutely